Hi guys, it's Dr. Jo. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about all things HRT. Now, bend over, be good, and let's get this thing in you. So, before I get into things, I'm just going to do a little disclaimer that is going to say, because I feel like I have to say this, is that I'm not medically trained in pharmaceutical things, I'm not an endocrinologist, I'm not your GP, I am just someone who has been on HRT for eight years and this is my personal experience of all the different things that I've tried and I just want to share all of that information with you and yeah so that's kind of it really so I hope you enjoy it and I hope you find it useful. The other thing I would also say is always consult a medical physician, always go to your general practitioner, go to a, a, a gender specialist or an endocrinologist to get the right information, to get the right doses and to start your HRT. A lot of people self-medicate, this is the real world. We, I've, I've done it, I have self-medicated in the past. I don't anymore, but I have in the past. Um, it's not advisable because um, you don't always know the quality of the products you're getting or where they're coming from or what actually is in some of them. It's quite a risky thing to do. So always go through your general practitioner or a medical specialist. The first thing that I thought I would talk to you about today is testosterone suppressants, T suppressants. There's loads of different ones out there. I personally have only been on one. Um, when I first started taking HRT back in 2011, I wasn't prescribed any T suppressors at all. In fact, I was just on estrogen and I was just told to get on with it. Don't worry about a T suppressant. But I found personally that at the time I was 36, I just wasn't getting the kind of results I was hoping for, which is not unusual at all from a trans woman. We never ever think they're working as well as they could do and we always want that little bit more, but I really didn't feel like it was. So I went back to my gender specialist, asked him about T suppressants and he prescribed me this. This uh, drug here, this is what is known as a GnRH analog injection. It lasts for three months, it goes into your butt and um, I never did it myself. I always got, um, I always went to the doctor's surgery and got the nurse to do it for me every three months. But what it does, actually, I'll show you what it looks like first. You in, inside you've got a kit with all the bits in it. So you've got the um, the solution there, the medication itself, and the needles for the nurses to use. When this is mixed together, it looks like dirty dish water, and you see her sort of coming up to you. She's like taking this off. And this is brown liquid in it and she's coming close it's a bit disconcerting <laughs> so um yeah that's what you get in a pack um what a GnRH analog actually does is that it works on your pituitary uh, gland in the brain and it overstimulates it so that it makes your sex organs um produce more hormone so ironically that that sounds that doesn't sound right but what happens in the first sort of two one to two weeks of taking something like this is that it overstimulates the gonads essentially and this testosterone level increases but then after about two weeks suddenly it just stops your levels drop right down and basically your sex organs stop producing um, sex hormones so it initially, it, it essentially, it just shuts it off. So it's not so much a drug that um, reduces the effect of testosterone, it actually stops testosterone from being produced. It literally just turns it off. And um, it's, it's a hardcore drug, guy. <laughs> um, after taking this, uh, about 24 hours, 48 hours later, I always felt a little bit unwell. I mean, that's just my personal experience, but I always had massive migraine. Um, I felt cold, I was really low in mood. It made me feel quite depressed. Um, initially, I think over the, I mean, I took it for about 
18 months, I guess, all in. But eventually I got a little bit more used to it. But generally though, oh, this stuff is powerful shit. <laughs> so you've really got to make sure that this is done under um, medical supervision, guys. This is hardcore. Um, but then there's also things like um, sp spironolactone. <laughs> Um, Spyro um, has been around for absolutely ages. I've got no experience of using it. We don't tend to use it so much in the UK now. It always seemed uh, very popular over uh, with you guys in the States. It's never been something that has been routinely used in the UK. Some people have taken it. I think essentially its original purpose was for blood pressure. I'll be with you in a moment. Hi. Let's drop your blood pressure. Um, but I've no experience of using it. Again, I think that's pretty powerful stuff as well. Um, I've been reading recently in um, forums on Facebook and online that there's a new kind of train of thought now when it comes to antiandrogens, and that is that they might not necessarily be needed as long as your estrogen therapy was at a really good level. Interesting. Let me know what you think below. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to go to is estrogens. There are so many estrogens out there to choose from. Um, in the UK, we don't have as much choice, I don't think, as perhaps guys in America or in other places in Europe or Australia, um, mainly because injectable estrogen in the United Kingdom is not licensed. And that is so frustrating um, because Injectable estrogen is considered to be, from what I have read and what I understand, the gold standard of estrogen, yet it's not available to trans women in the UK, which I think is bananas. I mean, trans men can get ingest in injectable testosterone, um, the T-suppressant is injectable. Why can't we have injectable estrogen as well on the NHS because what it's doing is it's driving trans women to self-medicate by buying it online. Um, there are some reputable sources but there are an awful lot that aren't and I think it's putting trans lives at risk personally. I think that we should have the option but anyway I digress. There are many ways that you can get estrogen into your body if you want it and the first one which is the one that I have been on almost the entire time I've been transitioning is via a good old patch. These patches here. Okay, let's just put my hand over there. <laughs> These are the 100 um, microgram patches um, and I change these every couple of days. Um, this is what the patch looks like. This, the, this is quite a big one. You can actually get smaller ones than this. Um, I'll, I'll open it up and I'll show you what it looks like because I'm going to put this little one on just a little bit later. So let's open it up and show you. So basically it comes like that and it's, that is it. And then you just peel it back and stick it onto your skin. <laughs> Job's a good Job done. So that's what I've been using. The downside of those is that um, they leave a little sticky residue around the outside edge after a couple of days. So when your underwear has been rubbing up against it or your clothing in general, the, the little gum that it sticks onto your body with, um, it can go really kind of tacky and horrible and it's really hard to get it off. You have to get it wet. You can use baby oil. You have to rub it and it can make your skin sore. Some people have reactions to the adhesive on these as well. And I know that after I've been using these for a while, well, generally sometimes I just get little marks all over where I put them. I tend to put them on the lower half of my abdomen. That's what it says to do on the packet. But I also put them in the top right, the top quadrants, if you like, of my bottom. So the bit that's quite muscular, I put them on either side of that as well. And I find that that works really well. Some people people put them on their thighs. I've not tried that personally, but I've, I've heard that that can work really well too. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of what I use. There is another alternative in the form of gels. Um, I have tried using these gels as well. 
um, they come in little sachets that look like this. Okay, there we go. I think these ones are actually out of date now, so I'm not going to use these. And the idea is that you just break it open and rub it um, on the inside of your thighs or your lower abdomen a couple of times a day, depending on what your prescription is. Um, I mean, it's good because you don't get any of that tacky residue around the outside edge, so <gasps> thumbs up for that. Um, my, my concerns about it when I was using it was that it took ages to dry and I was concerned that I'll put my clothes on if I'm going to work. I, you know, I'm kind of up against the clock a little bit. I put my uh, work clothes on and then I'll be thinking, oh, is it rubbing off onto my underwear? Am I actually wasting some of this? Is all that estrogen goodness not coming into my body? Is it going off onto clothing? Um, I, I, that kind of worried me. I'm sure that wasn't the case. And the other thing as well, when applying it at night, I was thinking, what if my partner wants to give me a cuddle and he, he rubs his leg up the inside uh, of my leg or something uh. to cuddle me? Will he end up getting this as well, which I really don't want? So those are worries that I had. If you have any answer to those worries or you have a good experience of using this or any advice, once again, drop a little comment down below. Love to hear from you. <laughs> and so with my cat. She'd love to hear from you too. Right. The next thing is pills. These babies here. I have tried these as well. I took them for a little while. Um, they look really small like that. Um, the problem with pills is that they are probably the, the only real medication that gives you serious kind of side effects. Um, when you orally take your estrogen, it, it passes through your liver twice and and the side effects of it going through your liver are what causes the problems so um, there's an increased risk I believe of DVT and stroke and all of those horrible horrible things um, I mean they work very well but you do tend to have to take quite a lot uh, because a lot of the ingredients are broken down in your stomach and by the liver so they're usually quite high in dose these pills um, it's not so bad, I don't think, if you are young and in your 20s and 30s, but when you get into your 40s and over, I generally um, endocrinologists and specialists don't like to prescribe you these pills because of those uh, high risks. Um, some people take them sublingually, which means they take the pill and they stick it under their tongue so that the estrogen then goes through the thin membrane in your mouth and hence, in theory, it only goes through the liver once as would do like a patch, for instance. So um, it's not going through your stomach, it's going through the membrane in your mouth and therefore it's getting into your system that way. Not all of them could be taken sublingually. I'm not sure that this one can. I don't think this one can, but some of them you can do. And another way of getting it into your body, a little bit controversially, is to get one and then stick it up your backside. <laughs> Honestly, um, apparently that is just as good as injecting estrogen. It gives the same effects. It's quite potent. Not done that one myself. Don't really feel the need to do that. But some people I know have tried it and they've had great results. So uh, knock yourself out. When it comes to estrogen, the last thing I'm going to talk about is injectables. Now, like I said earlier, I have actually um, injected estrogen. I have bought it online, not advocating that at all. It is now extremely difficult to get online, particularly if you are in the UK. The only, I guess I would say, trustworthy source no longer exists. So I would really advise against it because um, you just don't know where this stuff is coming from. Um, it's quite quite dangerous. In the States, you guys, you can get it on prescription, you lucky, lucky things. Um, but what I did use, I used this. I used this. And it comes in a little ampule like that. Um, I used it for about three months. And I must admit, I didn't like doing the injections at all. I used to do them every Friday after I got home from work and I used to dread it. 
I've never really been afraid of needles so much and I'm quite happy to go and have a blood test or whatever but I don't like doing it myself. It used to make me feel quite nauseous, even thinking about it now, <laughs> kind of making me feel a bit nauseous, it's really odd, but um, I didn't like doing it and you have to get it exactly right and you have to get it in the top part of your bottom and um, I suppose the more you do it, like with everything, you become more used to it and it's much easier, but after three months I still struggled and I just didn't like doing it. Um, results wise, um, the plus side of it was that I don't know, I just felt kind of like, I don't know if it was psychological, but I just felt a really strong feminine glow. I, I don't, I just felt good, essentially. I felt good on it. And the other thing I will say is that my sex drive was increased by it. I actually enjoyed sex a lot more. I was um, reaching climax a lot better. Uh, everything was really heightened. It was good. It was good. I, I still do, but I just, I don't know, I just don't feel that this, it works. These sort of things, they work, but I don't know, they're just not quite as potent, um, which is a shame because injections are difficult to get hold of. But anyway, um, I'm going to end the estrogen talk bit there, and we're going to briefly move on to progesterone. Now, in the United States, I know that you are readily prescribed progesterone. In the UK, not so much. Um, I know that some people can get it depending on which health service where they are with or whether they get it privately um, prescribed to them. I mean, it is licensed, but it isn't routinely used with trans women. Um, I don't use it. I don't use it because I don't know how to. I don't think my endocrinologist would in fact, I know my endocrinologist doesn't think it's necessary, uh, so he would never prescribe it for me. Um, but I have self-medicated with it. Um, I bought some online, I bought it in a little cream, and I applied it to my abdomen every day, um, just once a day, a little little dib dab. And I was just I was following the instruction on the bottle. Um, and what I found was it reduced the effects of something called estrogen dominance and what estrogen dominance is when it's the dominant hormone sexual hormone in your system which a lot of trans women will have and probably don't even realize they've got it makes you retain water it can make you a bit a bit, little bit lethargic quite forgetful um, it can make you feel really cold your skin can get really dry those are all kind of symptoms of estrogen dominance if you have a little bit of progesterone mixed into it it can reduce those effects but what progesterone actually does as well is that it um, counteracts the effects of, what progesterone does, it counteracts the, effect, counteracts the effects of uh, estrogen. So you have to be really careful that you don't use too much. I've had a few horror stories about people growing hair again, or their hair on their legs are getting a bit stronger and stuff like that. I mean, I don't want that. Um, but when I first had my um, SRS and I came home I had a terrible problem with hormonal imbalance it was awful and it lasted for about six months and I had terrible estrogen dominance my system was all over the shop and at that point I was at such a loss that I bought some of this progesterone cream and it leveled me out it did actually leveled me out some people think that it helps with breast growth and in and flew. I didn't see any of that. Some people say that it helps with hair. I didn't see any of that improvement either. Um, but I do think it helps to balance you, your system out a little bit. And um, I don't think it's a bad thing. But like I say, my endocrinologist won't prescribe it. Um, I don't feel too terrible without it at the moment. So I'm just kind of maintaining the status quo as I go along. If you have enjoyed watching this video, please give it the thumbs up really grateful to hear from you with a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe like i said in my previous channel i am trying to grow my channel i'm trying to get the word out there so tell all your friends and share the good news until i see you in my next video bye for now